Hey guys, it's time for another Tinkerdad video. So this time I've decided to make my own video about the ESP32. Now I know that it has been out for a while now, but uh, I haven't had the chance to have uh, first-hand experience with it un up until now, uh, simply because I didn't really find an actual use for it. I mean, uh, the its smaller brother, the ESP8266 is just fine for most use cases I uh, work on the moment, so it just happened that way. Anyway, um, let's see the unit and then I will tell you about my experiences and give you a, and I will give you a quick demonstration also. So this is the ESP32 uh, coming in the usual packaging. With, uh, with its uh, pins pushed inside this little piece of foam to protect them. So this one is branded as do it, whatever that means, um, but it's from Banggood and uh, pretty much the quality looks like to those uh, uh, Geek Rate uh, ESP uh, 3266 uh, node MCUs that I bought. As you can see, it has the usual stuff, micro USB connector and um, a lot of pins. I will show you a pin layout later on. Now, the first thing I must note before uh, going into technical details uh, about this board is that, according to my experience, it's not really uh, breadboard friendly. I can barely fit it into the breadboard, but it works. However, uh, it's quite a, quite a wide board wide uh, unit so basically it eats up all the space on the breadboard meaning that uh, I cannot use this one which is uh, by the way a pretty usual size but uh, I will need something that is wider and has more uh, pin slots if I if you have such kind of breadboard then it should be no problem for you but again I thought uh, this worth mentioning Okay, now let's see the features and the pin layout. Okay, so as you can see, these two pages are from the ESP32 specification. And uh, while the ESP32 based boards or MCUs come in various size, formats and flavors, uh, pretty much they are same on the core level. I mean, they are based on the same chip and most of the specification is exactly the same. Maybe there are additional pins or less pins or some uh, funky features added on uh, the given MCU but again uh, down to the core ESP32 chip they are the same. So as you can see the specification is pretty much a dream of a tinkerer even compared to the ESP8266 uh, pretty much I was sold at the part where I discovered the Bluetooth and the two processor cores, the higher frequency and so on. So again, nothing much to say here. This is just pure gold. Also, it features uh, a lot of extras, which I don't go into details. Check out the specification. I will put the URL into the description. Now about the pin layout. You can find this on the GitHub page belonging to Expressive uh, where they uh, published the code for the Arduino core of ESP32. And um, as you can see, there are a lot more uh, GPIO pins and a lot more specific pins compared to the ESP8266. So again, it means that uh, we can connect a lot of lot more devices to it. Also, it features the usual pins like uh, having a pin to supply or to get uh, out the 5 volts and one for the 3.3 volts. So again, this looks good to me. After going through the pin layout and the specification really quickly, um, basically you could say, okay, let's buy this. It's better than the ESP8266. And yeah, you're right, it's better. but you have to face the fact that uh, the community behind the ESP32 is much, much smaller than behind the ESP8266 and that's simply because uh, 
this chip is more expensive and much much newer so what does uh, uh, smaller community means obviously it means that you will find a smaller amount of tutorials you will find a smaller amount of example code uh, you will be uh, on your own with many stuff which is basically working for the old node MCU but uh, you will have to figure out on your own for this newer one uh, also let's take a look for example one of the most um, popular ready to use free uh, firmwares uh, for the old ESP it's called Tasmota and uh, you probably heard about it before so for example let's uh, search YouTube to see what we can find regarding uh, Tasmota plus ESP32 well uh, not much most of the videos regarding uh, Tasmota are for ESP8266 and uh, that's for a reason it's because simply there's no real working official port of Tasmota for it uh, yeah, let's see Google what we can find here. As you can see, not much again. But if you check the wiki page of uh, the Tasmota firmware, you can see a link pointing to an external fork of this firmware, uh, which is meant to be used with the ESP32. So let's see what uh, that fork uh, shows us. As you can see, this is seems to be something that has been in the works for quite a long time now but um, if you're familiar with git and or other version control system um, that count of uh, 993 commits behind means that uh, this firmware has already pretty much deviated and left behind uh, compared to the other Tosmota firmware which uh, doesn't look good to me to be honest and um, also the latest commits uh, on this framework on this uh, firmware sorry uh, is like five months old so it's not that old but doesn't suggest me to be in active development so i wouldn't rely on this to be honest which basically leaves us with the point that uh, it's safe to state that there's no Tasmota firmware uh, to the for the ESP32. Okay, so we get to the point where we realize that there's no Tasmota and uh, the community is smaller. But uh, let's assume that uh, you still want to get into uh, get your hands on uh, the ESP32. So what else? The good news is that you can still use the core libraries, uh, which is called ESP32 Arduino Core and provided uh, by Expressif, the company behind the uh, uh, chip itself. And uh, this Arduino Core uh, toolset is basically in active development. And uh, the even better news is that uh, it just went uh, one. Dot zero dot zero release so which means that uh, it's a serious milestone you know, <laughs> to have a 1.0 in uh, every software package's life and uh, they just uh, achieved this milestone like a couple of weeks ago and uh, up until that point uh, installing this package was quite a tedious task and upgrading it was also uh, problematic but now they at least support uh, installing via the Arduino IDE's board manager so kudos for them for doing it this is something I really wanted to have for a long time and uh, yeah this is nice to have so it means that following their instructions it's quite easy for you to install and uh, use this uh, board from Arduino IDE from now on if you check out the documentation you will see only literally a few steps and uh, after doing that installation procedure you can just uh, use your Arduino ID to run one of the examples on your ESP32 so let's do it 
let's see how this works out in practice. Okay, so this is my Arduino RDE ID and I will just install um, the ESP32 board manager, the usual procedure. So I will select file, preferences, uh, there's an option here to add an additional board manager URL. You already have the old ESP8266 there, so just open this extra window, paste the URL here provided by Expressive, then click OK, click OK again, then go to Tools and Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm never a bit tired. So, tools and select board manager here, then search for ESP32. You will see a pairing here, and then just click install. This might take some time depending on internet download speed and whatnot, uh, but apparently. Uh, it will finish in a few minutes or something like that. Then yeah, that's it. Okay, let's close this and now let's see if we can have ex examples for ESP3266. Okay. And then see any specific examples. So let's see something easy like basics, blink. It's a really minimalistic code that basically just blinks an LED on your device. So now let's see, select tools and here at board. Yeah, we can select various, various, actually it's quite a lot of different ES332 boards. I didn't expect this many, to be honest. Okay, let's see if this one, oh my God, that's not a lot of, Okay, so let's see. Right, so no them see you. No them see you, no them see you, where are you? Yeah. Then upload speed looks fine. Flash frequency. I cannot select the port at the moment because I don't have my device connected, but let me do it anyway. Funnily enough, I didn't, still don't see it, all those, uh, although window, Windows uh, reported the device to be connected. So I probably need to restart Arduino IDE to figure out what's going on here. Okay, so after a few minutes of experimenting, it turned out uh, that um, for some reason I need an external driver uh, to have this board working and to be able to connect to it and flash it. So I need it to go to this web page and uh, you can download the universal driver uh, for Windows here. So I just downloaded this driver, installed it. It was literally a few steps, nothing special and at the same time, right after uh, installing the driver, uh, COM3 port appeared in my ID and I was able to flash the Blink example to my Node MCU. Also, it worth mentioning that <laughs> I'm an idiot <laughs> and I didn't realize that there's the exact model I have here listed in this this whole list of different uh, uh, ESP32s. So I selected this model, then selected the port and basically just used upload. And everything went right and now I have the built-in LED blinking. 
So I guess it's time to wrap this video up guys. Uh, it already taken much longer than I expected but again I had some infos I wanted to share with you. So thanks for watching the video. Oh yeah I forgot one thing. So yeah here blinky blinky. <laughs> okay so point is as you have seen it's working. As usual if you like this video please hit like hit subscribe and now if you check out the channel I have Instagram and Facebook page running up too so feel free to follow me there I'm uh, sharing oh on Twitter too uh, there I'm sharing information uh, and about the channel behind the scenes stuff and stuff like that so it's worth checking out too anyway thank you for watching this and see you next time